Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to make a final animation in Blender. So we're going to be starting with the modeling, doing the animation, the physics and the materials and then rendering it out. So the whole process step by step. And you can see here, this is the final result. And I'm going to be making this project file right here available on my Patreon. You can go check that out in the description below. Also, if you guys check me out on Instagram, that's also in the link below. And if you guys subscribe, I really do appreciate it. I absolutely love my subscribers. You guys really give me a lot of motivation to keep making this stuff. So I do appreciate it. Let's get into this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, so when you scene open up in Blender, go ahead and select all of the default objects, hit X and go delete. To make things easier for you, I'll just go here and enable my screencast keys. So if you look down here in the corner, you can see the keys that I'm pressing. So I'm now going to go shift A, we're going to go to our mesh options, we're going to add in a cylinder. With this cylinder selected, we're going to go into our front orthographic view and we're going to go RX90 and we're going to hit enter. Then we're going to go S.2 and hit enter. So we've scaled it S.2. Then we're going to go to our right orthographic view by hitting free on our number pad. Then we're going to go S, Y and just scale this one in a little bit. We're going to go Control A and we're going to apply the scale. We're then going to go to a modifiers tab, add modifier, we're going to add in a bevel. We're going to come down here, make the limit method angle. And we're going to come to an offset and just decrease it and make the bevel smaller. We're going to come to our segments, hit it twice to give it free cuts. Go to object and enable shade smooth. And on top of that, we can also add a subdivision surface modifier. Select this guy and just go control A, just make sure to apply the rotation as well. Okay, once we've done that, we're going to go shift A, we're going to go to cube, we're going to add in a cube, tab into edit mode, and just scale this cube down to here, and then go S, X, and make it really skinny. Then go G, Z, and just bring it up to here. And then what we're going to do is select these top vertices, and we're just going to go G, Z, and bring them up. But to have a nice reference, what we're going to do is just quickly tab out of edit mode. So we're back in the object mode, we're going to go shift A, go to our mesh options, add in a circle. Then we're going to go RX90 and we're going to hit enter. Then we're going to go control A and we're just going to apply the scale at the rotation on this as well. So what we're going to do then is we're going to grab this guy again, tab into edit mode. And now we have a reference for how tall we want this fan blade to be. So we're going to go just under there and we can make it a little bit skinnier if we want to. And we can also go S, Y and scale it on to Y a little bit. Then we're going to go R, Z and we're just going to rotate it like this. Okay, just a little bit to give it a bit of an offset. Tab out of edit mode and what we're going to do now is we're going to go add, we're going to add an array. With this array modifier we're going to make this value over here zero. So all of these vectors need to be set to zero. We're going to click on object offset, we're going to click on a little eyedropper and select this circle here. And make sure to apply it. I know we've already done it, but just make sure for this to work. So go control A and just apply the rotation. That's very important. Otherwise it might not work. So with that done, what we're going to do is come with this guy selected, come to the um, array modifier here, and we're going to give it a count of 32 and we're going to hit enter. Then we're going to select the circle and in our front orthographic view, we're going to just rotate it. And we're going to rotate it holding in control can give you a little bit more um, control. And I'm just going to come here and rotate it like that. So if I hit N here and I go to my item, you can actually see the circle, the rotation value is this over here. So if you want to type that in, but that should be fine. Do something like that. Then we're going to go and apply that array. And what we're going to do is with this selected, we're going to hold in shift and select this guy over here. And we're going to go control P. We're going to set parent to object and we're going to keep the transform. Then we're going to select this thing here. Tab into edit mode. We're going to go G, Y and just bring it forward a little bit. Then we're going to go E, Y and extrude it to here. And then we're going to hit A to select all of these vertices. We're going to hit E, right click to let go and then Alt S just to scale it out. Pressing Alt and S. Just to make this case in the outside like that. There's like this protective case. Then we're going to tab out of edit mode. We're going to go to our modifiers, add in a bevel. We're going to come down here, make this uh, the limit method angle. And we're going to also just decrease the offset here a little bit just to have we have a finer bevel. Increase the second count to two. And on top of this, we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier. We're going to go to object and we're going to enable shades move. Okay, so we're getting there. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit A to select all of this. Then we're going to go G, Z, holding and control. We're going to bring it up and we're going to snap it to the grid. We're going to snap it right to here, as you can see. Then we're going to go hit free to go to our right orthographic view. 
We're gonna go Shift A, go to our Mesh Options, add in a cube, tap into edit mode, and then we're gonna go G, Z, holding in control. We're gonna move this up to snap it onto the grid. So we're gonna put it right on top of here. We can see our little pivot or origin point is there in the middle. Then we're gonna to go to our face select, select this top face. We're gonna go G, Z, and just bring this down. And then we're gonna hit A to select all of it. We're gonna go S, X, and just scale it on the X a little bit. Maybe bring this face down a little bit more. So you guys can see what we're doing here. What we're gonna do then is hovering over here, we're gonna go Control R to add in a loop cut. Just double click to add it in. Then we're gonna hit double G just to slide it in to about here. Go to our face select, select this face here. We're gonna go E to extrude it up. Go to our edge select, we're gonna select this edge here and then we're gonna hit double G and we're just gonna slide this edge into here. Then we're gonna go back to our edge select, select this edge here. And we're gonna go E to extrude it up right to here. Then we're gonna go S, X, and just scale it on the X to make it smaller. So now we have this, which is exactly what we want. Tab out of edit mode. We're then gonna add a modifier. We're gonna add in a bevel to this guy. We're gonna come here to the limit method, make it angle, and then we're gonna just decrease the offset here and make it smaller to about 0 0.01. And we're also gonna give the segments a bigger count. And then we're gonna come to object and enable shade smooth. So now we have this here. Then we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna to go to our mesh options, add in a plane. With this plane selected, we're gonna go S to scale it up eight times. So go S8 and hit enter. Then we're gonna tab into edit mode, go to our edge select here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hover over here and go Control R or Command R, and we're gonna just roll our mouse up once to add in two loop cuts. And we're gonna double click and that's gonna add in these two loop cuts here. Then we're gonna go Control B one more time and we don't want to roll in extra cut, we just want to go like this, okay? And we just want to go SX maybe a little bit, bring it in, just something like this. And if they're too thick, you can just go here and enable individual origins and go SX and just scale them individually as well. That's a little trick there. So we're just gonna go with something like this, set it back to median point. Okay, once you're happy with where these are positioned, you can go E and just extrude them up to about here. Then we're gonna tab out of edit mode. When with this guy selected, we're gonna go Control A and just apply the scale. Then we're gonna go to our modifiers, we're gonna add a bevel. And what we're gonna do is here, come to the offset and just make it much smaller to create a much finer bevel. So 0.005 in this case, and just increase the segment count, go to object and enable shade smooth. Okay. and. Go back into edit mode. One thing you can also do is while you're still on edge select, you can come here, go control R, and just roll in a few um, loop cuts. Double click, go control B to add in a bevel, roll in one cut in the middle, double click, and then you can go control minus to shrink the selection, then go G, Z, and just bring these guys down. And you can do the same thing here. Hover over here, go control R, roll your mouse just so you add in this many cuts, click, and then go Control B again, and just make sure to roll in one cut extra in the middle, like that, and then go Control minus to shrink the selection, then go G, Z, and just bring it down a bit. Tab out of edit mode, and now we have these nice ridges over here. If you don't like the shading over here, you can also just go Control R over here, roll in two cuts like this, click them in, go S, X, and just scale along the X. Okay, so now we have our um, floor here. So what we're gonna do as well, just quickly, is just come in over here like this. We're gonna go Shift A, go to your camera, and add in a camera. Hit zero if that camera selected to go into camera view. Then hit G, hit your middle mouse button, and just pull back to zoom out to about here. And then go to your camera settings. We're gonna make this one an orthographic. Then you can go to your output settings and make the Y resolution here 1920 and hit enter. Then what you can do is come over here back to your camera settings and if you mess around with this orthographic scale, you can zoom in or out and you can also hit G with your camera selected to pan around like this. So for now, let's just leave it as it is. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in some more objects here. So we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a mesh and this is gonna be our actual flag, so add it in. And then what you're gonna do is go R, Y, nine, zero, and hit enter. Then hit free to go into your right orthographic view. Go G and just move this guy in front 
to about here. And then tap into edit mode, grab this edge here and go G and then X or no G, Y and just move it to here. So just G, Y, move it forward to about here. Go control R to add in a loop here. Hit A to select all of this, then right click and go subdivide. Go down to the subdivision tab and give this a count of 22 and hit enter. So you should now have this many divisions. Click on the vertices select here. Shift and Alt and you can click on this edge here and that's going to select all of these vertices here. We're going to go to um, our object data properties, go up to vertex groups, hit the little plus and go assign. So we're now assigning these selected vertices to this group. Tab out of edit mode, we'll get to that later. But for now, let's just add in one more thing. So we're going to go shift A, add in a cylinder and we're going to scale this guy down very small. So it's going to be a pole here. Just bring it up, go to your right orthographic view, G, and just bring it over here, scale it down a bit more. And then you can tab into edit mode, go to face select, select this top face and go G, Z, and just bring it up to here. And then select this face here at the bottom, go G, Z, and just bring this down. Tab out of edit mode, go to object and enable shade smooth. Go to your modifiers and give this guy an edge split modifier. Okay, so now we have all of the objects. You can go into your camera view to see if you like that. And once again, you can select your camera and double tap R as well to rotate it. You can also just hit R to rotate it and you can also hit G to move it. So just get a view like I have here or a camera position. So we just want to see everything here in our camera view. And what we're going to do next is we're going to come in here and add the cloth simulation to this. And we're going to add a collision to these guys here. We're also going to add in a wind force field that's going to um, affect this. So that's going to be the next part. And then we can get into our lighting and materials. Okay, so first of all, we're going to select this guy over here, our flag. We're going to go to our physics tab here, click on it, and we're going to give this guy a cloth. Now, once we've done that, we're going to come to the quality steps here. We're going to bump them up to 12. That's a pretty good number, I reckon, for getting quality, but it's not not too much render time or calculation. So what we're gonna do then is go down here all the way to our collisions. Let's just drop this tab down. We wanna make sure we enable self collision so the cloth can interact with itself, giving it more realism. And one thing we also wanna do is just come over here to the shape. And earlier we added that group of vertices. So what we're gonna do is come to pin group and we're gonna just select group. So it's gonna just pin those vertices over there. So if we actually just hit our um, play bar now, our space bar, this is going to play and you can see here we have a cloth. But it's not interacting with anything which is not what we want. So what we're going to do is go just shift and then a left arrow button just to go back to frame one. Also just go object and enable shade smooth. So what we need to do is grab this floor over here. We need to give it a collision. Also select this pole and we want to give it a collision. And we also want to select this guy over here and just give it a collision under the physics. So if we actually hit the space bar now and we play this, this is going to be interacting with our ground, which is what we want. Okay, so that's really good. So what we also just need to do is add in a force field. So we're going to go shift A, we're going to go to our um, force field, we're going to add in wind. Go to your right orthographic view and with this wind we're going to go G, just move it out over here, and then we're going to go R and rotate it like this. Just move it back here, roughly just there and then what we're going to do is go to um, click on this tab we're going to increase the size just, or just decrease it a little bit just so it's nice and tucked away back here and you can't really see it so just something like that and then you're going to come here click on this tab and you're going to come to the settings here and we're going to increase the strength strength to 1600 so type in 1600 and hit enter and that's really strong but it's going to do the job for us so now if we go into our camera view go to frame one we hit our spacebar and we play this animation, it should affect our flag. Okay, you can see here the flag is actually blowing in the wind. And what we could do probably is just with this guy selected, just come here and just increase the size as well. Let's just see if that works a little bit better. Okay, that's working. So it could be quite slow on your computer, but it, it all depends. So we're gonna we're gonna be caching out it out anyway in a second, but that looks okay. So what I'm gonna do is maybe just bump it up a little bit. Um, just bump the strength up to 2,500 maybe. And go back to frame one and just play it. 
and I'm just gonna see what that looks like. Okay, so that, that seems to work quite well. So you guys can totally mess around with this value here, but I'm just gonna go with 2500, it seems to work. With my earlier tutorial that I practiced, uh, I did it at 1600, but that seems to work okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just select the flag over here, go to modifiers, and on top of this, we're just gonna add a solidify modifier. And that's gonna give it some thickness. We don't wanna go too much. And then we're just gonna add a subdivision surface modifier as well. Okay, that's really good. So what we're gonna do is cache this out. So let's just come to our end frame value here. We're gonna make it 200 and we're gonna hit enter. So we're gonna have 200 frames. And we also just wanna come grab this cloth over here. We're gonna go to our physics settings here and just go down. And under the cache, just drop it down. We also wanna to come to the end frame value here and just make that 200 as well. Because we don't wanna be caching out 250, it'd be unnecessary. And before we bake this out, all we're gonna do as well is just select this guy over here that these fan blades are parented to, and this is super easy. Just come to frame one, and we're gonna go I, and insert a rotation key. And then we're gonna come here to frame 200. We're gonna hit N to up and open up our properties panel. We're gonna come to the item, and under the Y, we're gonna make it 1,400, and we're gonna hit enter. And we're just gonna hovering over this, hit I to insert a keyframe on this rotation. And we're gonna select both of these keyframes here. Very important, they're both yellow at the moment. Then we're gonna hit T and we're gonna make the interpolation linear. So let's go to frame one. Let's go into our camera view and let's just see what this looks like. And at the moment it's gonna look really slow obviously because this is um, simulating, but let's just quickly cache it out. So what we're gonna do is to cache it out, select this flag over here. Go to, under the physics tab, just go back to that cache over here. And what we're gonna do is just hit bake and it's gonna bake this out for us. And then when I'm done with that, we'll come back and we're also gonna save the file. Okay, so the simulation has now fully cached out. I'm just gonna go ahead, file, and I'm just gonna make sure to save this. And now if we hit the spacebar, we're gonna see our, um, it's all baked into our blend file here. And that's looking really good. And this is not a loopable animation, but it still looks really cool. cool. So this is the final effect here. And now we can get into the fun part, which is just our lighting and materials. So we're just gonna make this look really, really awesome. Okay, so what we're gonna do first of all is come over here to our render settings, and we're gonna make sure the render engine is set to EV. We're gonna come down here, enable ambient occlusion, and we're also gonna come down and enable screen space reflections. Once we've done that, we're gonna to go to our world settings here, and you don't have to do this part, but I really recommend adding in a HDRI. You can go to sites like HDRI Haven and download a HDRI file for free. So you can just come over here, once you've downloaded one, come to the colors tab, just click next to it, go to environment texture, hit open, and then you can load in one that you have. So I have one here that I really like for this that I'm gonna use but you guys can choose your own ones, tons of free ones on the internet. So this is called HDRIs. And once you've done that, depending on how big it is, it could take a while to load in, but this one was okay. You can come to the strength and we're gonna set it to 0.4. And it all depends on your HDRI as well, but for mine, I'm gonna set it to 0.4. So what I'm gonna do then, or what you guys should do as well, is go Shift A, go to your lights, add in an area light. Then we're gonna go G, Z, and just bring this light up to about here. Go to our light settings, we're gonna increase the size to four meters. And then what we're gonna do is go S, Y, and just scale on the Y a little bit as well. We're gonna make the power 800 for a scene of the scale. Then we're gonna go to our right orthographic view, or our front orthographic view. We're gonna go G, move this guy over here, and then R to rotate it in. Then shift D, duplicate another one, and then just rotate it in like this. Then if we hit zero to come to our camera view, and we go Z, and we go rendered, we should be able to see what it is looking like. And along with that HDRI, this is looking really nice. So let's get into our actual material. So we're gonna start by selecting the flag over here, and then we're gonna to go to our shading. Just make sure to go back into camera view, make sure you're in rendered. And with this flag selected, we're gonna hit new, and we're just gonna call this material flag. And we're gonna come over here, and the material I'm gonna, the color I'm gonna go with is something like this. And you can see the hex value here, if you wanna type it in and have it exactly like mine. We're also gonna grab this roughness and just bring it down a little bit to about 0.38, should be fine. Then we're gonna select this fan case over here. We're gonna go new. We're just gonna call it case. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to the base color. We're gonna make it a nice blue like this. We're also gonna increase the metallic value all the way up to one. And we're gonna bring the roughness down just a little bit. We're also gonna select this guy over here, this guy in the middle and the fan blades. And holding in shift, we're gonna select this fan case. We're gonna go Control L and we're just gonna go link and we're gonna to link to materials. So all of those items have that same material. 
We're then going to select this pole over here. We're going to go new. And we're just going to give this guy a full metallic color like this and just bring the roughness down a little bit. So that is okay. Then we're going to select the floor over here. And we're going to go new. And with the floor, what we're going to do is give it a nice kind of salmon-y salmon pink material like this. I'm going to bring the roughness down on that a little bit and increase the metallic a little bit. Not too much, maybe about halfway to 0.5. Then we're going to tab into edit mode. We're going to go to our face select. We're going to select this face in the middle here. Go down to our materials tab. We're going to hit plus and we're going to go new. And we're going to go assign. And with this one, we're going to make it a little bit, um, we're going to make it like a pinkish red, kind of like this. Make sure it's assigned. And we'll come here to the roughness and just decrease it a little bit. And we want to increase the metallic about halfway as well. Just maybe make it a little bit more saturated. Tab out of edit mode and have a look at that. So you can mess around with this roughness. Um, I might bring the roughness on this one down a little bit more. And just maybe give it a bit more of a metallic. Totally up to you guys to mess around with it. But this is kind of like the materials I went with. I really liked it. It's just something that looks cool about it. You can also just grab these lights here if they're a little bit too powerful. I might knock them down to 700. And like I said, your type of HDRI is also going to affect a lot of things. But this is looking pretty cool. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you how to render this out as a final animation. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our output settings here. We're going to come down to the output, click on this folder here, select somewhere on your computer. I'm just going to select my desktop. Then we're going to come down here to the file format. We're going to hit um, FFmpeg. Go to the encoding and we're going to make the container an mp4 peg. So mp4 peg. And one thing I would recommend if you want this to render faster, so that's what I'm going to do, is click on this output setting. And under the resolution here, I'm just going to make mine 70% because that'll still be okay, but you guys can leave it at 100% if you want. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come here to render and we're going to render out this animation and then we're going to see what it looks like. So go ahead and hit render. And here we have it. This is the final animation. This is what it looks like. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please subscribe below. It means so much to me when you guys subscribe. Hit that like button as well. And if you want to support the channel, a great way to do that is on Patreon, where I also make a lot of these um, scenes and files available. And I also do exclusive tutorials and I put a lot of cool assets on there. So check that out in the description below. You've been awesome and I'll see you guys later.